Hello everyone, it's Tanya with Scribbles in Time. I'm going to do a flip through of my latest journal and um, I have named this journal Fields of Gold and I did use a brooch on the front as the focal point for the front. Um, I've done several others if you've watched any of the previous videos with brooches and I've mentioned before how much I, well I love vintage jewelry anyway. I love old brooches. I have a small little um, box full of old brooches and uh, my my wheat brooches are dwindling down and I'm really sad about that because I love wheat um, but this particular brooch is from the 50s it's a pearl seed bead brooch let me hold it up so you can see it closer I don't even know if the camera can do this justice it, I mean just you know feeling the texture and that type of thing says so much so much more when it's in person but um, that's what it looks like, and um, just very, very pretty, very dainty and delicate looking. Um, it's got a gold tone to it, but as, you know, with age, it has some little areas where it has started fading a little bit, which I love that. I love imperfections, um, especially when something's real old. Uh, to me, the imperfections show the um, age of the item and the life that it's had, so I like that. Um, but I don't like to alter things permanently if I can at all avoid it. So what I did with this brooch, um, so that this wooden frame here, uh, underneath it, and again, this isn't gonna show very well on camera, but um, there is cheesecloth that's been painted black, and it's, it's just a beautiful texture underneath the brooch in person. Try to angle it with a light, maybe it'll hit it, but in person you can kind of touch and see that texture. Um, so what I did was I put the cheesecloth on top of like black mat and then I pinned the, the brooch into the cheesecloth and black mat and then I, I got a piece of black cardstock and sandwiched the back of the brooch between the mat and the cardstock and I glued all around that so but I didn't get it onto the pin so my thought process was you know years from now or if anyone has this you know else gets this journal and they want to put something else on the front as the focal point my thought was they can with some work can pop this off pull the backing off of this wooden frame here and undo the brooch was my thought process but anyway it may live out its life just like this who knows but that was just kind of what I did to try to avoid altering that brooch um, you'll see that the, the wood has been kind of grunged up, a um, little bit of stamping on top of it. Again, I don't know how well that shows on camera. A um, little bit of gesso on it. Um, behind that is some cheesecloth. All of that's on top of a cabinet card. And this is one of the cabinet cards out of that old photo album that you may have seen in one of my previous vid videos that I filmed. But on the side, you can see that um, it had gold. I don't know if you call that gilding or embossing or, or what, but that photo album was so amazing. Um, the cabinet cards all had this pattern like etched into the edges of the pages with this gold so that when the book was shut, it, does, it was a um, floral design. It was so pretty. Um, so you can see that gold there on the side of this page or this cabinet card, I should say. That's layered on top of some cardboard um, you can see here is a brass um, industrial badge plate um, with a number on it. And under that is a stick. Over here is one of the old watch part vials. And I do actually have that stitched on to the covers. So there are five covers in this book. Um, this is technically one journal, but as I've done in my previous styles, there's actually two journals within this one. Um, so there's a writing journal at the top, at the front, art section consisting of the main portion of the journal. Um, so anyway, this watch part vial, that's the original label that was on the front of that. And I put um, some like little pearl beads um, to kind of tie together with that brooch and a little bit of, of fabric in there. It's hard to see on camera, but... Um, the book that I used here, which I'll talk about that book in a little bit, but it sticks out here on the side. So here's that book 
with this black cover and an old green cover and then this level of this um, layering that we just went over with the focal point. So what I've done here is, um, I don't even know where to start really. So this green book cover here is, uh, I have no idea what book that came from. I know it's very old, but all I had left of that book was just the front cover and a back cover to it. The spine was gone, but there was a piece of the spine, like insides, um, kind of hanging off of it. So I used that right here. Um, you can see it's that textured, um, like book spine fabric or whatever there. And then this is a piece of an old book um, spine sticking out there. It, it was a burgundy book. I think I used that book for my Christmas journal. And that was a piece of that spine poking out there. This up here was part of another book, but I wanted just a touch of red because when you turn the book like this, you can see that there's just a touch of red poking out. So I just wanted to have just a tiny touch of red. So that's what I did there. And then um, an old stamp here that's got just that little hint of red on it. And then some old paper. This is a little bit of the spine out of the inside of this book. And what, oh, and this is a little piece of the mushroom, uh, mushroom, gosh, mustard, <laughs> lost my word, the mustard color that this, this book is like a mustard color, and that was a little bit of the fabric from the inside of the spine there, and I wanted that mustard color to kind of pull from, you can barely see the edge of this mustard book in the bottom right there. Um, that's pretty much everything there. The, um, this is vintage lace here on the bottom, and if you lift it up, you can see two of those book covers layered under there, and the green one is so pretty. It's like a warped, just old book, so you can see it's, it's misshapen, which I love. Um, not to use as a, the base book, you, that would make it not good, but to use as this, I love, you know, I just love that old look. Um, there's gesso and ink. And I've layered some paper down on the bottom of that as well. Um, I did some little muslin book corners and grunged them up to help protect these corners. So I'll flip it over to the back now and kind of show you the back. And you'll see it's the same black cover as the front. And then I've um, grunged it up with some gesso and inks. There's stamping on it, which you can... You can barely see in person, so I'm not sure that that'll pick up at all on camera. And then the little corner protectors and um, the spine. I did that layered spine look. The book on the inside is called Some Other Folks. And um, I don't know a lot about that book. I'll tell you what little I know as I get to that. And I've put these stri strips of material across here to give it that look as if that's holding the spine on. And that's that. Um, is that everything from the front? I think so. Oh, so yeah, these you'll you'll see when I get to um, the. There's only one signature where I did the inside stitching on the signature so that the um, the wax thread would hang out so I could hang something from the center. And these are I, I don't really know what these are. Um, I got these out of my father-in-law's workshop, so. I, in my mind, they're, you can tell they're like a light wood, almost like a cork feel, but they're not cork. I think they're just wood. Um, I don't know if they're part of maybe some fishing lures. There was a whole little box of them. They're new. Um, so I have like a box of these, and I thought they were just so pretty, and I put some of the little pearl um, beads on there to coordinate with the pearls. So I think that's about everything. So this is the top. Let me show you the spine again. The bottom of the book and the side view. Okay, now let's open her up. So on the inside here, so this book here, um, all I had on this book was the book, 
the spine and the back cover. There was some pages tucked inside of it, but I don't think they went to this book. And I do have one of those in here, but I don't think it was part of this book. It wasn't attached. It was just slid in here. And uh, I don't remember where I got this cover from. Um, I have no idea. So I started trying to do some research to, to see what I could find out because as you can see, the author's name is not even on here. It just says by the author of Cape Cod Folks. So when I started trying to research the book, I did come across an identical cover, but it had a different title there. So this is called Some Other Folks, a novel written by the author of Cape Cod Folks. So anyway, just for fun, I started trying to research it. I love doing that anyway. And um, I don't, <laughs> I feel ignorant when it comes to authors because as much as I love books, I'm, I'm not good. My memory's just not good. I'm not good at remembering authors' names. Heck, half the time I can read a book and then two years later I can read it again and it's like I'm reading it for the first time. <laughs> My memory's just not good. <laughs> So, and, and that serves me well in some cases. There's some things I don't want it to be good for. But um, but anyway, I say that joking. But um, but anyway, so I'm not good with, with authors. But in researching this, I did find out that the author of the Cape Cod folks apparently is a, a woman. Her name's like, um, Sarah Pratt McLean Green. And she was born in the mid-1800s, like 1856. She died in like 1935 so she had a nice long life um and from what i had read about her it, it i pulled up a list of like 14 publications that she had it looked like the last one was somewhere around 1912 um but i didn't see this one listed in there i saw the cape cod folks so i don't know but I don't know when the copyright of this book would have been, but the Cape Cod folks, I think, if memory serves right, I think it was like um, 1880s, somewhere in there. Her husband, I remember he died. She was from like um, New England and she moved here and well into the western part of the United States. And her husband died like 1889 or 1890 somewhere in there and she moved back to New England when her husband died so some of her publications you know was while she lived in in the United States some were while she lived in New England so I don't know I just found that interesting it, it I almost um it had a picture of her on there and she was beautiful and I just enjoyed researching her enough about that I'm sorry I get sidetracked sometimes but um I just thought that was interesting so the inside of this is for writing and I've put a pencil here. You can put a pen in here. It's a little, it's hard and um, messy stitched. You can see with the black stitching. Can you see it? Um, wow, that's kind of hard to see on camera. Okay, well anyway, it's got like that black stitching here. And I just put some beads and I tried to do kind of a mustard color with kind of a pretty curly pinky color because if you look these flowers on this book have a very pretty coral look and it's much more noticeable because I kind of accented it over here on this page with some washi tape and the print and the flower there and I did that to try to pull those colors out of this cover anyway um so here in this writing section this is some really old thin fabric there and then there's just the basic paper. This is some of the um, stitches that my friend Dee did and gave to me. Fabric. This is a label for the um, lemon and barley water. And I just attached it there with a rusty um, paper clip. Some grungy paper. Um, this is writing paper, like manuscript children's paper, with um, some pretty ribbon lace coming down the side of that. Um, this is one of those um, like milk caps, a little fabric here on this page. This is a cigar box label, and I did it kind of like a tab on the other part of this um, material. Oh, I think the material's on the other side. It is um, scrunchy paper. This is an octagon soap coupon. There's, you can see it's an original coupon. I won't take that off. It's, it's very cool. It is original. 
um, a rusty paper clip there. Some material coming down the center. There's like 40, 42 writing surfaces. This is material here. I did that kind of like a little flip. That's another one of the um, labels. Oh, here's the other part of that material. Um, that right there. Pretty embroidery on that. Graph paper. This is some really old trim. Real grungy paper. This is a little French um, uh, flashcard, word card that I worked in there, kind of like a little flip. Um, this is so cool. This is a, br um, it's like a brass um, clip. It's like a I think it was called a tie clip or a belt slide. I can't remember now, but I thought it was a money clip, but it's not. And it, you can attach a charm from it. I just attached a little game piece, just a random game piece. But this is so pretty. It's, it's To me, it looks like copper, but I think it's brass. But it works so well as a paper clip. It really holds stuff onto something like that. And I did put a little envelope here with a old coupon in it. And then there's just a old picture of a little boy on the front. Like that. And then this is the back of the book, um, of this book. And I love, you'll see it's all grungy. Now I did write these down. But this was spotted, and I love that about it. Again, I love for stuff to, other than me, my hair and my face, I don't like for it to show its age. That's a joke. Um, but I do love when stuff shows its age. It's just, to me, it's more personality. I love it. And then we'll get over here to the art section of the journal. So there is a crochet doily here. And then you kind of flip that open, and this is the first page. So on the first page, I did a um, real pretty flower, fabric flower there with um, all kind of collaging on the background. And I used some little washi tape that had the same color in it. I don't know how well that, oh yeah, it shows pretty well. Okay, and then this is a wooden bike, a wooden bicycle die cut up here on the top of the page. Down on the bottom is some pretty lace, which also kind of layers through and shows from the front. And then um, this is a pair of, um, it's like a vintage style scissors, and I built out a little holster for them. You have to kind of spread them open so those beads will fit through. I didn't want them to be able to fall out every time a person opens the book. But there's some scissors and this little holster here. Well, <laughs> I, I made the holster and stitched it on, and I, I made a little kind of a, homemade lock here so that's a bead y'all if y'all can hear the snoring in the background that is my dog <laughs> he has quite the snore but I, I guess it's better that he snores than barks he'll probably do that in a little bit so the scissors kind of work for like a tab there to flip over um, the pages are all grungied up with gesso inks collaging just uh, this is old wallpaper oh my gosh y'all he is snoring so loud I am so sorry <laughs> Um, so here is some um, print, some like typed print, and some book spine. This is a piece of a book spine coming down the edge of that, just to kind of give a little support where I had stitched on that holster for the scissors. So anyway, this is some beautiful lace. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but it's so pretty, and it's old, and it's like a little strip of satin. The other side of it, you'll see, has like two strips of the satin with some lace in between. You'll see that in a moment. Um, beautiful trim here on this page. Oh my gosh, I cannot get over how loud he is snoring. Oh. Okay, so this is the center um, here, and I've put fabric coming down that. 
And again, this can be pulled out or snipped up, snipped down, you know, whatever if the person wants to add gesso and paint or sketch. I did a little flip here. Um, this is a label, um, ginger ale, dry ginger ale label, and it's old. So I did like a flip there with that. I didn't want to glue it onto the page in case anyone wants to, to gesso and paint. This is the other side that I was telling you about with the satin strips and the, the lace in between. And I flipped it over. I've run a stick through that, but only because there's already a pencil here and there's a paintbrush farther back. So, I mean, you could put another paintbrush in there, another pencil. But I love sticks. I love anything from nature. In fact, I've already decided if this journal doesn't sell, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing with it. I'm going to be putting pressed um, flowers on my pages, and this is going to be kind of a nature journal for me. And I probably want to try to um, even do some of my fall leaves. I, I pressed a lot of fall leaves last fall, and I want to use some of those as well. But anyway, that's just a side note. Um, so I love sticks. That was my point. So I folded this over and stitched down it and put a stick in there. And then... Um, this is another collage page. This is a fabric tab. I don't, I don't know what you call this when, when the, when it's done like that. But let me, let me grab it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on one second. So it's, it's this. I have a roll of this, and you'll see on the back it's all. What do you call that? It's like stitched or embroidered or whatever to where these strings, I guess, make that. So I used two of them and made a tab on the page. And then on the other side of that crocheted doily, you can see in between the signatures um, is that fabric, that's the black and earthy tone um, with the pencil holder there. Um, so you can see that material in between the signatures. Here is some more collaging, and I love the way that black pulls off of that black material. It just kind of peeks through. And then this is made to look like a butterfly slide. And I've put a little, um, this is an antique um, brass tag. I don't know if you can see it very well on camera, but I've attached that to the front of this little slide. And put it on here like a tab to this paper. On the back, I really hated that I had to cover this up, but for it to, th this was a piece of a, a, a page that was one of the pages slid into that book, had a number written on it in pencil, and you could bear it was so faded you really couldn't see it anyway. But still, I had stitched that on so that that showed from the back, but then it ended up getting mostly covered up. But it's really neat. That's actually a piece of paper from the inside of that old book. And then this was the page that was slid into this book. But I don't think it went to this book. Um, I didn't research this only because this opened up such a rabbit hole for me that I, I didn't even go there with this. Um, it's beautiful. It's just these beautiful images on it. Love it. I stitched it onto some fabric and put it inside of um, a page protector and this is a penny with a cross punched out of it that I've put as a tab onto the top of that Can you see? and then this is a poem um, it says so often I wander into the night not daring to cry and willing to fight it's not what I see that rallies my fear the words that are said are not what I hear. In case you can't tell, you guys, I've gotten sidetracked. <laughs> There's somebody walking, and um, it startled me for a moment. I have the windows open, so that startled me. I apologize. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to start over. So often I wander into the night, not daring to cry and willing to fight. It's not what I see that rallies my fear. The words that are spoken are not what I hear. Understand. It is by fate that I choose to fight. No darkness or doubt will hinder my light. And I always try to put kind of an original poem in my books. Um, so, you know, I, I put that there. And it's just one that I wrote specifically 
for this book and um that's that and this is where the little fishing lures or whatever these things these little beads are hangs from if you know someone doesn't like them they can be snipped off and i did this so that this covers the actual string but the string comes through the center for these to hang from but there's no string showing otherwise does that make sense anyway this is a beautiful app what was it called applique that i've put here on the edge of this paper as a tab and it's kind of that coral color from here see how pretty this is to me this just looks like rows of different trims and I remember at one point I thought I was gonna like cut these up into strips and use them you know it's, but I think it's too beautiful I love it like this so that's what I've done a page of those <laughs> just love that anyway um, another blank page to paint write sketch on and then in between these two signatures I've attached some ticking and um, ran a paintbrush down there to hold a paintbrush in there. And then this is the um, Master Buck. Y'all have seen I've used those before. Um, but it's an old clothing tag. A little piece of map. This is a real pretty embroidered napkin. You see it? The shadows are starting to get kind of rough in here. Um, maybe I'll flip on my lamp. It might help. Oh, it's blinking. Okay, that might help. Believe it or not, this was ironed. <laughs> I think when the book closes, it must be folding over on itself. But I did iron this, and for me, that's saying a lot. <laughs> I'm not one to iron um, very often. Just more collaging. This is old wallpaper. Just more collaging. I don't know how much of the collaging I've been pointing out. The the um, script with the gesso over it. Um, anyway. This is a cigar box label that I put down the side of this page. Is that light helping or is it messing up? I don't know. Maybe that wasn't a smart idea. Okay, let's finish it up. This is the back part of that napkin. And then this is some beautiful crochet trim and that's the last page it has a little bit of script there with this beautiful crochet on it so when the book's laying that crochet is meant to when it's laying flat that crochet is meant to stick out like that and it gives you that real pretty well you can't see it when it's on camera but from the side when it's laying on a table it's just a beautiful beautiful piece um that's the last page there and the back inside cover. Again, you can see the little corner tabs and the fabric that was put down on the spine. In the back. That completes the flip through. Um, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Let me snip this little string off. Um, please don't hesitate to ask. I would love um, if you would please hit the like button for me, please. And um, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much for watching. This will be listed in my Etsy shop. And um, thanks again. Y'all have a blessed day.